Welcome to the Bible. The word Bible in its original language means book. It's the book, the greatest book, the best book, the most important book. In fact, it's way better than Lord of the Rings or Twilight or Harry Potter or even all of them combined. It's the only book that was written entirely by God through men. The Bible is the story of God. The Bible is a story with seven key elements that we see all throughout its 66 books, 1,189 chapters, and 23,145 verses. Here's the elements. God created, man fell, Jesus promised, Jesus fulfilled, Jesus followed, Jesus returning, and the Bible is God's word. We're starting the first of 66 books, Genesis. It's part of a grouping of the first five called the Pentateuch, which was written by Moses, who's a character we will soon meet, but enough backstory. Let's get started. At the beginning of everything, there was nothing but God, just God, only God. And God spent a week making everything that we've ever seen. On the first day, God created the universe and a special planet where he was going to write the greatest story of all time. He called it the earth. The spirit of God was hovering over the waters and he created light and darkness and the rhythm of day and night. God looked at all that he had made and, and it was all good. On the second day, God made the atmosphere and God saw that it was good. On the third day, God separated the oceans from the land and plants and trees and shrubs and flowers, basically everything that comes from a seed, from pumpkins to pine trees, and God saw that it was good. On the fourth day, God created the sun, the ball of gas that has lit every memorable moment in your life. And the moon and the stars, those infinitely large sums that are spread out all over the universe, he gave the sun a job. The sun's job was to rule the daytime. The moon's job was to oversee the night. And he made them move in a galactic choreography of dates and times and seasons. It was a big day and God saw that it was good. On the fifth day, God created all the creatures for the sky and all the creatures for the sea. Whales and sharks and clownfish and anglerfish and eagles and pelicans and pigeons and hawks. And God saw that it was good. On the sixth day, God created all the creatures for the land. Alligators, frogs, worms, spiders, cows, deer, gophers, and about a billion more. And then he made man as if adding his signature on the corner of his painting, he made man in his own image. He made man to look like him. And he gave the man dominion over all that he had made on day five and day six. That means he put him in charge of everything in the material world to steward it and take care of it. And God looked at it all and he said, this is very good. Then on the seventh day, God rested, establishing our forever rhythm of work and rest to this day. He set an example for us to do excellent work, be satisfied in our work, and to take a day of rest. God named the man Adam, and Adam named the woman Eve. He told them to enjoy everything that he had made, except this one specific tree in the middle of the garden. God told them not to eat from it. Adam and Eve got to live naked and unafraid in the garden, naming the animals, experiencing the joy of being close to God and to each other in perfect harmony with no problems or sickness or death. But they got tricked by the devil, God's enemy, who was in the form of a serpent. Eve ate the fruit from the tree and so did Adam. They were tricked by the devil it might have been an apple, it might have been a pomegranate, we really don't know, but we do know that they broke God's only rule, and that's how sin came into the world. God cursed the devil for his deceit, 
and he sent Adam and Eve out of the garden with a curse. Adam and Eve's sin caused them to be separated from God. Everything that used to be beautiful and flawless became corrupted and began falling apart. Everything sad or painful that has ever happened can be traced back to this one moment when humans chose to disobey God for the first time. But something beautiful came out of that curse. When God cursed the devil, we have our first ever Jesus moment. In Genesis 3.15, the Bible talks about the seed of Eve battling the seed of the devil, referencing the ultimate destruction of our enemy by Adam's son, our savior, the greatest person of all time, Jesus Christ. Adam and Eve had sons, they named them Cain and Abel. Cain was a gardener and Abel worked with the animals. They brought some of what they had made to God, but Cain brought it with evil in his heart and Abel with righteousness. God was happy with Abel, but not with Cain. Cain got angry and killed oh. his brother and was banished. But God still blessed Adam and Eve with a new son, Seth. And from Seth, there were lots of generations of fathers and sons living long lives, like Methuselah, who lived 969 years, or Enoch, who only lived 365, but he never died because God brought him to heaven. Here are all their names. Another one was Noah. Noah obeyed God. You see, the, the earth was full of violence and sin. And God was sad that he made the earth because of how awful it had gotten. But God had a faithful man, Noah. All throughout the story, Noah did everything that God commanded. God told Noah how to build the biggest boat the world had ever seen because a flood was coming that would destroy everything. Noah did all that God commanded. It took Noah around 120 years to build the ark. Can you imagine that? If someone was building an, a big boat in Nebraska since 1897, you'd think he was crazy, right? But Noah did all that God commanded. God told Noah to bring his family, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives onto the ark. Noah did all that God commanded. God also preserved all the creatures he had made by having Noah bring them onto the ark with his family, two of each kind. It was a floating zoo. Noah did all that God commanded. When it started to rain and the waters rose, they all boarded the ark, but the door was too big to close, so God closed it for them. Then it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. They floated as a family with all the animals for 150 days. When the flood was over, God made a covenant with Noah marked by a rainbow. It was God's promise that he was never going to do this again. It was the first of many covenants God would make with his people, a series of agreements and promises for how he would gradually bring mankind back to himself. From Noah, there were lots of good people and lots of evil people born. Here are their names. In those days, everybody spoke the same language. God wanted them to spread all over the earth and multiply, but they stayed together and tried to build a tower up to heaven called Babel. They wanted to be famous and powerful. Because they disobeyed, God confused their languages and they spread all over the earth. From Noah's son Shem, the line continued generation after generation until a man was born named Abram. This is just the beginning of God's story, which we say has seven parts. God created, man fell, Jesus promised, Jesus fulfilled, Jesus followed, Jesus returning. The Bible is God's word.